What's up guys, it's Kress here today. Uh, today I wanted to bring you a video regarding uh, kind of my daily routine and my recommendation uh, for anyone wanting to maximize their efficiency in the game. And I wanted to start off with just um, typically uh, from the Elder Rift here, claim your free rare crest. Uh, hopefully one day soon that can get updated to something better, maybe uh, orange crest even, or at least two rare crest. And after that, uh, you want to go right to Ivanfod Sanctum. It only takes about a minute to run. Uh, kill enough monsters to get four keys to drop. And for the chest opening, truthfully doesn't matter how many you're opening. Uh, the math kind of checks out to where whether you're only opening the first room or saving your keys for a full clear. You kind of end up with the same amount of gems per keys. So just kind of open whatever's most fun for you. Doesn't matter that much. Uh, right after that, uh, you want to head to the Hilt's Trader. Typically, I cancel the teleport, and in that time, I claim my uh, free daily shop rewards, which aren't great, but they're bonus. Um, first kill of the day, I claim that as well. From the Hilt's Trader, make sure once per month you're buying your Legendary Crest. By far the best use of your Hilt's. Uh, legendary item, uh, not useful for anybody. Same with the Carson's Invigoration. Uh, these are both kind of a waste of hilts, because you don't quite get enough hilts to buy all the good stuff every day or every week. Uh, Telluric Pearl, definitely worth it for everyone. Make sure you're buying that. Uh, Rare Crest, kind of make sure you have at least 30 per week. And I'll go more into detail on that when I talk about the Elder Rifts. Uh, Normal Gem, make sure you're always buying 10 per week. Uh, which gem you buy, truthfully it doesn't matter all that much. You kind of want to upgrade all your gems evenly, but I would put the lowest priority on the red gems, so both ruby and tourmaline. You don't get a whole lot of value from those, uh, but the blue and the yellow gems are definitely great. Uh, Reforged Stone, not worth it. Purification Shards, not worth it. Uh, Aspirant's Key, um, these are technically worth it, but I'm not buying these every day just because I don't get enough hilts per week to kind of keep up with a daily purchase of five keys. But buying those is still worth it. Uh, simple charms, I would say that no longer are they really worth buying. Um, unless you're trying to create a charm for yourself. Um, or if the skill stones are still selling good on your server. Uh, scrap and dust, not worth it. Same with the immortal shop, uh, mainly just the legendary crest. Try to buy that uh, once per month if you're in the Immortal Faction. Uh, rare Crest, um, if you're kind of low on them, try to buy some of these. But if you're already at like 50 or more Rare Crest, typically I just save the hilts. Uh, limited Time Shop, same goes here for the Rare Crest. Just buy it if you need it. And then always look for the Normal Gems here. Um, so that sometimes you can pick up an extra one or two Normal Gems uh, per refresh in the Hilt's Trader. So, as far as stuff to do daily, um, from this point on is when I would farm normal gems. So this will uh, progress your character the best as a free-to-play or light spender. Uh, try to run, if you can find a party, typically with your clan or warband maybe, uh, willing to hunt hidden lairs with you. Uh, you can cap out your normal gems, which is 9 bound, 9 unbound normal gems per day. And if you have a party willing to stick with it and try to cap out your gems, I'd say you can do that in about 30 to 45 minutes um, if everyone's participating. Um, otherwise, if you either don't have the time or it's hard for you to find a party, I'd still make sure you're doing at least like 2 or 3 hidden layers per day. And while that won't cap you, it will give you most of the gems. Now, from there you'll want your four-player party gems. You can get up to 12 of these per day. And what I typically am always doing is spamming... Where is it? Tuma Fahir. So, in all of the activities that I've tried with gem farming, Tuma Fahir is always the fastest by quite a large margin. Um, I'll just... Continuously run Tuma Fahir with a four-player party, and I'd say typically it's going to be about 10 runs of that. 
uh, to cap out your 12 gems. Um, if you get a lot of those from the hidden lairs, that'll help you not need to run as many Tomb of Fahirs. But I find that hidden lairs, I often get 0 to 2 unbound gem drops per day. Um, after that, um, typically you're kind of done and can do whatever's most fun for you in the game. Um, if you really want to squeeze out more unbound gems, you can get three per day from fishing. Uh, based on my own experience and from what I've heard from other people, I'm pretty sure you can only get one casket per day from each zone in fishing. So the casket is what's going to give you the unbound gem. It seems to be just random while you're fishing. Um, so if you are fishing in Biofen and you get that uh, casket for the gem, definitely worth switching over to, um, say, Ashwold Cemetery. And if you get a second casket, switch to Tundra. And once you get your third casket, you can't get any more per day. Um, I would say that's not really worth going out of your way to do, though, because it does take a long time to get those. Um, I've seen upwards of one to two hours until you get your first casket. So if you're not already fishing, it's not worth doing it. But if you do uh, fish regularly in Diablo Immortal, uh, make sure you're changing zones once you get a casket. Um, and I don't have complete confirmation on that, but as far as I can tell, it seems to be one per zone per day. Now, um, if you do those activities, you won't really have to worry about your daily uh, codex rewards, which is the 300 platinum uh, charm, some hilts, and... Uh, one green item per three dungeons. Um, if you're following that routine, you'll never have to worry about that. Um, I would say, though, if you don't quite have the time to keep up with that, and maybe at least try keeping up with those daily rewards. Um, at least the platinum. So 120 battle pass points per day is all you need to cap that. Um, that does stack up to three times, so if you have a couple days where you're not playing, then when you next log in, you could get that uh, 360 battle pass points uh, to get all three days worth of rewards there. And for a weekly activity, make sure if you are in a clan that you are running the Accursed Towers and maxing out this contribution chest. Uh, you can get three chests per tower your clan owns. Uh, you can see my clan only has one right now, so I can get three chests per week. Um, but if you have two towers, you can get six per week, which is three from each tower. Um, if you already have two towers and your clan um, ends up picking up a different tower, it does not adjust how many chests you can get. So if you already capped out six and then you get a new tower, you don't get a bonus three chest. Uh, likewise, if you haven't capped it yet, you're not missing out on rewards if your clan gets a new tower. As well as uh, warband raids in your heliquary, uh, try to... Complete these in a warband, and try to always do your raids with 8 players. So that will give you the most uh, demonic remains and legendaries. This is kind of uh, a way to progress your combat rating slowly over time. And there's no catch-up mechanic, so if you fall behind, you're kind of just permanently behind, sadly. Same with the Ancestral Tableau. This will... Uh, you'll get points for this as you... Uh, complete raids with your warband. Uh, you'll get about one or two upgrades per week from this. Uh, just like the Heliquary, if you kind of fall behind, there's not really a way to catch up. Um, it's still worth doing. You can see I'm getting a lot of combat rating from this, even though my warband right now I'm missing out on the strength bonus, but that's okay. And as far as that goes, truthfully, there's not really... All that much else worth doing as far as making sure you're keeping up with it and always doing it. Uh, there's always stuff like uh, turning in monstrous essence. I try to do one per day and from doing your hidden layers you're almost guaranteed to get at least one bestiary turn in which is all I really care for. That will give you a guaranteed legendary and a high chance at getting a page. Uh, the other two potential page turn ins I don't really worry about myself. Um, there is side quests you can do, uh, you can pick them up for some dust, but they're 
kind of boring and doesn't really matter whether you're doing those or not. Just want to make sure I'm not missing anything here. Ah, the uh, vault. So every week, whether you are immortal or a shadow, try to take the time to cap the vault. That will give you the most hilts per week, uh, which is a limited resource and what you need for progressing your uh, secondary stats with normal gems, aspirin keys, uh, legendary crest, rare crest, all of that. And... If you're a shadow, you can loot up to 40 chests per week. If you are a mortal, um, you can defend the vault, which is kind of fun, but a lot more time consuming than raiding the vault. And if you are a shadow, make sure you are doing your assembly every day. It'll give you some free aspirin keys, uh, quite a bit of experience too. And it's really easy um, after a recent update. If you're not AFKing it, uh, you can almost guarantee cap it out on each first blessing run. So it's about seven or eight minutes to do that. And crest merchant here. Uh, you can buy an orange and a purple crest. A purple crest, you have to complete a warband raid first per week. But you want to buy both of them. Um, over time, these are worth the platinum, even the orange crest, to where you will come out ahead compared to just spending that platinum on buying gem power, for example. Um, for a short-term use, this might seem like a waste, because, you know, you buy one and then you get a one-star, and you're like, well, I could have got a one-star for cheaper than that. But over time, and with the pity system with it for the five-star gem drops, you're still coming out ahead on gem power per platinum. And if you get really lucky and get like a 4 out of 5 or 5 out of 5 gem, that's going to put you far farther ahead than you really could have gotten as a free-to-play player. Uh, from myself, you can see I got a bound 4 out of 5 frozen heart um, a couple months ago. And just recently I got a 4 out of 5 howler's call as well. Neither are gem that I intended to use, but uh, that's kind of the most resonance I'll get as a free-to-play player, especially without having to save up platinum for those. All right. Um, I think that about covers it. If there's anything else you like doing in your daily routine, uh, please leave a comment down below and let me know, and I'll let you know my thoughts on it. Otherwise, I hope this helped. Peace.